a little over a year ago, we knew certain things, yeah. you know, and they were damning. Right. But we've learned a lot yeah. in the year plus since then. There was a lot of organization um, to it. There was a lot of involvement with the White House. You know now that there's just a much tighter nexus between the people who were doing various things, like the people upstairs here and, and the people who were running the, the rally itself. The notion that all of those people would all be like camped out at one hotel. Right. And you know, later describe it as like a command center. A command center. It's a command what? It's like you have a speech at a rally. What's there to, to command? command? What's supposed to happen after the rally? Yes. All of this was designed to figure out anyway. Right. Legal, illegal, by rioting up there, or by having objections on the floor of the house to just basically stop the vote from happening. They knew that in January 6th, that was it. That was the legal day we elect a president. That had to be stopped at all costs. When you think about all the news this week, the first thing, Judge Carter's opinion obviously rang a lot of bells, that Trump likely broke the law. It's the first time a federal judge has come out and sort of endorsed what has been the emerging right. theory of the committee. It's not just of the committee. DOJ is relying on the very same statutes that the judge in the Eastman case relied on. One is you cannot corruptly obstruct a government proceeding, and that includes a proceeding on Congress. And was it corrupt? The improper purpose was to keep a guy who lost an election in power. OK, you couldn't get more corrupt than that. The other statute that's even broader, conspiracy to defraud the United States. The president of the United States stole a billion dollars. He'd go to jail. This guy tried to steal our democracy. Right. And so these statutes fit like a glove. Why does this seem like the DOJ is not investigating Donald Trump? <laughs> I'm not saying they aren't. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to the Justice Department that Merrick Garland is doing what Garland promised to do in his right. speech on January yeah. 5. The Justice Department remains committed to holding all January 6 perpetrators at any level accountable under law. They're doing what they do in big organized crime prosecutions, which is they're working their way from the bottom up. This is a high stakes prosecution. The bigger the case is, the more you have to have confidence right. in it to bring it. Yes. And, you know, it's like the old adage, if you shoot at the king, you better not miss. That's a scary proposition for prosecutors. I think people rightly feel like Trump has managed to get away with a lot of shit. And yeah, behave with his impunity. entire life. His entire life. The president of the United States conducting a coup from the Oval Office. Yeah. So, or at least in the political context, there's right. no worse thing you could do. If somehow the combined forces of the 1-6 committee the Justice Department, the American public, yes. having been moved by whatever public hearings that they yeah. do. If that all ends with Donald Trump walking away going, right. got away again, guys. I don't know that if he's not prosecuted, we won't somehow survive. But it will be a historic failure for the country.